Good morning, everybody. Um, had that nice problem of running out of orders of yeah. service. Um, I seem to either print too many or not enough. <laughs> I seem to never be able to get the, the ratio correct. But hopefully, you all know the service, hopefully, so it should be all right. And, and morning to those watching um, us at home as well. Um, got quite a few notices this morning. It's quite nice to have some notices, actually. Um, first thing is you'll notice on your way out, um, Julie has brought some tomato plants um, to sell in aid of church. Um, you can have a minimum donation of a pound, but you might like to be a little bit more generous than that. So as you leave this morning, um, if, you, if you'd like to take one of those tomato plants, please just pop some money in the box provided. Um, and apparently they're ready to harden off. I didn't know what that meant, but those of you that know things about gardening will know what that means. Um, so the Sweet Millions, Gardener's Delight, Roma, and Moneymaker. Is that Moneymaker? All right, okay, there we are. So that's what's available, and they're for, for a greenhouse or a conservatory. So uh, thank you ever so much, Julie, for bringing those. So as you leave this morning, they're in the porch, uh, so to basically help yourself and just pop some money in, in the pot. Um, if you would like to take one with you. So thanks for that, Julie, that's great. Um, just as we start to sort of move back to a, a regular pattern of services again, um, what we've done instead of creating a rotor, um, what we've got here is um, basically a rotor where you can sign up for which Sunday you would like to do the reading. So, um, just pop your name on a Sunday that you know you're going to be here. It's a lot easier than putting the rotor together and then having to swap and faff about and stuff like that. Um, so do pop your name down on there. Um, so if you've, if you've been used to doing the leading in the intercessions before or doing the readings, please do pop your name down um, on there and then we can have a sort of working rotor like that. So we just can try it out anyway as an alternative to your traditional rotor. So you can choose, and, and actually the readings are actually on here, so you could even look them up to see if there's any trip up words and think, well, I won't do that week. <laughs> so please put your name down on there, uh, just so we can get some more, more voices on a Sunday morning than, than we've been having. That would be great. Um, I'm sure all of you saw the, the funeral yesterday. Um, of Prince Philip, it was incredibly moving, wasn't it? Mm. And and I felt it was very much having done an awful lot of pandemic funerals. It really felt like the royal family was in solidarity with all of us that have had to experience very stripped back funeral services. I was very moved by that, really. But it did remind me, of course, that that Prince Philip planned his funeral quite carefully, didn't he? He chose exactly what he wanted. And I always say to people, and it sounds a bit morbid and a bit strange, but one of the greatest gifts you can give your family is clear instructions about what you would like for your funeral. Organising a funeral, especially when you're not expecting it, is one of the most stressful things. I'm sure some of you have been through it. It's one of the most stressful things you can go through. And actually, the person that's died has left some nice clear instructions saying, well, I'd like this piece of music and I'd like this reading. It just gives everybody a bit of comfort because you feel like you've done right by that person and you put together a service that's special. So, um, at the back of church I've put a few of these booklets and I think I've shared these before. Um, but it's, it's called Ideas for, for My Funeral Service. And it just guides you through the bits that you might like to think about and choose. Um, and you can make it fun. So you can think, well, what's the last hymn that I want at my funeral? And you can put, please do not play all things bright and beautiful, or whatever. <laughs> uh, so you can specify what you would or wouldn't like. Um, so as you leave today, you might like to take one of these little booklets with you um, and just find a quiet moment to sit down and, and fill it in. And then put it in your file, and then you don't have to worry about it. Just tell, tell your family members, that's my funeral plan, it's in the folder. And then when the sad time comes, it will make life a lot easier um, for, for your family. So it's, it's something worth doing. I've done it. It doesn't matter how old you are. You don't know when you might die. I did it because I take a lot of funerals and I know what I don't want for my funeral. <laughs> so I've actually written down what I would like. Um, so if you haven't done that, it's definitely worth doing. 
and then you can just be, have peace of mind really. Um, so if you'd like to take one of these booklets with you then please do. I've put some of these at the back of church at Bulbara as well and you can download this from our church website as well. Um, so if you put funeral plans booklet into, into the search bit on the church website you'll find it there as well. So just thought I would mention that uh, after yesterday's service. Right. Um, oh, um, a special announcement is that we are going to be starting up our safe space group again on Tuesdays. Um, it's, uh, it's called Safe Space Clown and it's, it's a mental health support group. So really it's just an opportunity to gather with other people um, and, and just chat. Um, and it's especially for people that might be struggling a little bit with their mental health. And we all have times when we're not feeling so great mentally and particularly at the moment. And of course we've been closed for the last year really uh, because of the pandemic. But we, we've decided we're going to start the group up again. When the weather's nice we will sit outside. Uh, when the weather's not so good, we'll sit inside. If we are inside, uh, we will sit socially distanced wearing masks, which isn't fab, but at least we're together and chatting. Um, so mainly it will be an outdoor group. And we can have a maximum of 15 people. And, and I think that's probably the most we've ever had at one session. So we should be all right in terms of numbers. So if you know anybody that's been to Safe Space before, um, please, please let them know we're starting back up again. Um, and if you haven't been before, you're very welcome to just come along. It's just an opportunity to sit and chat. At the moment, normally we offer tea and coffee and nibbles and things like that. But again, because of the pandemic, it's a bit too complicated to try and do that at the moment. So if you can bring your own drinks, that would be great. So just bring a little thermos with you um, of whatever you'd like to drink. Um, so we're starting Safe Space back this Tuesday and then every Tuesday going forward. So it's between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock on the whole. Um, and this week as well, on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, we've got a PCC meeting for Clown here. Um, so 7 o'clock this Tuesday. And Bulbra, um, we're going to meet on Zoom because it's a bit too cold to meet in, in St James's. So we're going to meet on Zoom for Bulbra on Wednesday at 7.30. So PCC members, just take note of that. Um, it won't be a full-blown PCC meeting, it's more of a discussion meeting than a, than a sort of business meeting, as we had, we had PCC quite recently. And I think the last thing that I need to do, which is a nice job, is to publish some bands of marriage. We've got quite a few weddings booked in this year. Um, so these are for a couple of weddings in May, so these are the first ones <coughs> this year. In fact, the, the first people they're getting married on the 15th of May and of course it's not until the 17th of May that you can have 30 guests. So they can only have 15 guests but what they're doing is they're having 15 guests at their wedding on the 15th of May here and then they're having a wedding blessing in November where they'll have all the hymns and the whole thing here in church. So, so I think that would be quite nice really, they're just separating out the two parts of having the reception later in the year. So I published the Bands of Marriage between Christopher John Reeves, Reeves and Penny Ann Coleman, both of the parish of Bulbra, and between Richard David Stevenson and Kay Elizabeth Smedley, both of the parish of Clown. This is for the third time of asking if anyone has any reason what, in law why these persons may not marry, you are to declare it now. So let's pray for these couples. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing these couples together and to the important day of their marriage. And we pray that their marriages will be life-giving and lifelong. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, it does feel nice to be doing band marriage and you know, normal things that happen in church. It's wonderful. <coughs> stand as we begin our worship. Right, make sure you give this a bit of wedding, okay? <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let us prepare to worship together by saying, Almighty, Almighty God, God, your, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. 
give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we stand here together, we reflect on the week that has been and consider how we have been with other people and how we have been with God. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we declare together the song of the angels, the Gloria. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, heavenly, heavenly King, King, almighty God, God and Father, Father we, we worship you, we give you, give you thanks, we, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Lord of God, you alone are the Lord. Weeks collect together. Risen in Christ, Christ, you, you filled, filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen, strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God, God the Father. Amen. Please be seated for our meeting. <coughs> The first reading is from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to be to Jer Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. taken from Acts chapter 3 verses 12 to 19 
when Peter heals the crippled beggar. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though through our own power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God had raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel reading. <coughs> Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He has defeated the powers of death. Hallelujah. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Hallelujah. He has the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now we have another reading that comes halfway through. So if you remember the story of Cleopas and his companion on the road to Emmaus, they've just arrived back in Jerusalem and they've been telling the disciples that they've seen Jesus um, in the breaking of the bread. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. On Good Friday this year, the President of the Humanist Association tweeted this. Just a little reminder today, Dead people don't come back to life. What perhaps she didn't realise was that, of course, we all know that this isn't true. That this is true, sorry. Dead people don't come back to life, do they? That is what is so astonishing and amazing about the resurrection. The Reverend Richard Coles, whose partner died young last year, replied to the tweet and said, Hey, you angry Twitter, because lots of people were angry about this. Hey, angry Twitter, Alice Roberts, Roberts is right. 
Dead people don't come back to life. Believe me, I know. When Christians like me proclaim the resurrection, it is not to refute biological truth. It is an expression of faith in the power of God, which is measureless. Sometimes I think we look back on those early Christians from the first century as a bit backward and not like us. We often think, well, science is so advanced now, we know a lot more than the people that lived in the olden days. And this has led some people to argue that the resurrection wasn't literal, that it wasn't bodily, that it was something simply spiritual. But reading today's passage from Luke's Gospel doesn't allow at all for that interpretation of the events. Remember that Luke is a doctor. He's also a meticulous researcher, and he begins his Gospel writing that he has tried to set out an orderly account so that the reader may know the truth of what has happened. Just like us, the disciples knew that dead people don't come back to life, especially people who have been so thoroughly dispatched by the Roman justice system. There is no way that the Romans could have allowed a merely unconscious body to be taken down from the cross. The punishment had to be meted out in full. This is why the soldier double-checks Jesus is actually dead by thrusting a spear into his side. And John records this in his Gospel, speaking of how he sees water and blood come from the wound of Jesus. What we know now is that he actually saw blood and plasma, because plasma looks a bit like water when it, when it comes out. And biologically, those two things, blood and plasma, can only be separated after death. In Jesus' case, death by suffocation. So Jesus was definitely dead when he was placed in Joseph's tomb. Dead people don't come back to life. Well, we've all heard stories of ghosts, though, haven't we? And quite naturally, the disciples, when they see Jesus, think they've seen a ghost. I would have had the same reaction. I'm sure you would, too. Sometimes in grief, we think we've seen a loved one again. No wonder the disciples are terrified at first. So how does Jesus prove that he's not a ghost? Well, firstly, he shows his friends the wounds from the crucifixion. They still look fresh. They can be touched. Jesus can be touched. A ghost can't. And then Jesus utters one of my favourite phrases in the Gospels. Have you got anything to eat? It reminds me of poor old Paul, that, yeah, I did warn him that I was going to mention him this morning. But when Paul gets home from work, the first thing he does is he goes to the fridge. He opens the fridge to see if there are any answers in the fridge. He's nodding, it is true. And I'm sure if any of you have got sons, you'll know that that's the first thing that they do when they get into the house, is find out if there's, have you got anything to eat? Have you got anything to eat? Jesus is hungry and asks for something to eat. It's the most human thing he could ask, isn't it? Ghosts don't need to eat because they're dead. So the disciples give him some broiled fish, basically some grilled fish. This is where I'd like to refer you to the image that's in your orders of service. And I'll just, I've got a big version of it here. And I'll just see if I can uh, hold it up to the camera so people can see at home. And there's an image of this in your orders of service. This is taken from a series of images of the resurrection by the Leeds-based artist Cy Smith. And Cy sets all of the resurrection accounts in the city of Leeds. And this image is my favourite. If you look closely, you'll see that the disciples are upstairs in a fish and chip shop. Steam is rising from the fish and chips in the paper on the table and from the cup of tea, cups of tea that the disciples are holding. And Jesus lifts up his jumper to show the wound in his side. And you can imagine shortly after doing that, him leaning forwards to pinch a chip from the table. I wanted to share this with you, as the resurrection would have been just as astonishing to the disciples as it would be to us if we were gathered in a fish and chip shop after the death of a friend. The disciples and Jesus' first followers were no different from us. 
They knew that dead people don't come back to life. Here is Jesus standing among them, showing them his wounds and asking for something to eat. And it is this that changes everything. If Jesus didn't really rise from the dead, then we might as well all pack up and go home. Our faith would be utterly meaningless. And perhaps one of the most convincing things about the resurrection is the fact that the disciples did exactly what Jesus asked them to do. After the ascension, they really did go out into the world to share the good news. They risked their lives and everything on the fact of the resurrection that they had witnessed. This group of 11 men, at this point Judas hasn't been replaced, are totally transformed from a terrified, motley crew into people who will change the world forever. Rowan Williams writes of the resurrection, something has happened within history that has altered what is possible. Someone has made an irreversible breakthrough in the definition of humanity, which can never be undone. To believe that the world can change, that God can turn history on its pivot, is to believe that in all sorts of human situations, it is possible for things to be different. The resurrection marks a new start to creation changes our destiny as human beings forever. It tells us that another world is possible, that the impossible is possible with God, that there is always hope because we stand on the knowledge that Christ has died, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Alleluia. And we're declaring together our belief in the resurrection. And if I always find saying the creed together really powerful because sometimes you're not feeling it. Sometimes we have a day where we're not sure we believe all this stuff. It feels like wishful thinking. But there will be some people in this room that are definitely believing it today. And we all carry each other through by saying the creed together and declaring what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray.
Let us pray. In our prayers this morning, we remember Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, whose funeral was yesterday. We pray for his soul in the Lord's care, for the Queen and his family, grieving the loss of a strong, devoted husband, father, grandfather, and great grandfather. We pray for our church. We thank you, Lord, for our church, of which we are members, and pray your blessing on all who share with us throughout the world. Save us from being inward looking, and help us to turn to those on the outside, remembering the Church of Christ is for all, far and wide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our world, help us to think of all who struggle with lives full of care, to grasp every opportunity to help to change things in your world to care for and cultivate, to guard from waste and abuse, so that we may enjoy its fruits, and with thankful hearts, share them with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick, Lord, we hold in our thoughts and prayers all who are sick and suffering in mind, body or spirit, be they at home, in hospital, or other caring establishments. May they know you hold them in your loving care. We pray for them all, especially those known to us. Wyatt and Gareth Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret and Jim Gilmore, Luke Firth, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, Jean Naylor, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Richard Abbas, John Tuckwood, Margaret Marples, and Kath Goodwin. We offer our prayers for the souls of the departed, remembering Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and Geoffrey Warren. We ask your blessings on them and give their grievous families, knowing you will give them strength and support through trying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, we pray for our communities here in Clown and Balmer, hoping people will remain vigilant over hands, face and space for the protection of all. We thank you for our homes, families and friends, the love and kindness they afford to us. Help us to remember the lonely and those less fortunate than ourselves and do whatever we can to improve their situations. Make us grateful for all your good gifts and deepen our trust in your loving care. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now some prayers of thanksgiving for the life of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We give you thanks for his long and full life, for his strength of character, and for his devotion and service to family, nation, and commonwealth. We praise you for his generosity, the many contributions he made to our national life, and the encouragement he gave to so many, especially to the young. Accept our thanks and praise, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn, especially at this time to the Queen 
and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please would you stand as you are able for the peace. <coughs> I'm always very struck that the fact that when Jesus appears in, in the upper room to his friends, the first thing that he says to them is, peace be with you. He doesn't say, why did you leave me? He doesn't say, where were you? Only the women stayed. He doesn't tell them off. He just says, peace be with you. And he does the same to us as well. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace, peace of the Lord, the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. So we offer one another a sign of peace by <laughs> greeting one another in a safe manner. <laughs> peace be with you. singing over his shoulder sort of thing. It's directed almost straight at me. But I feel uh, I feel well protected now. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you, and all we have heard is true. When you break bread, may we recognise you as the fire that burns within us, that we may bring light to your world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give thanks and praise. Right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, Earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same way that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave it thanks. 
He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of death. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the mother of Christ, St. John the Baptist, St. James, and all your saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Let's bow our heads 
to receive God's blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And so, with the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.